Thank you very much, Chair, and I'd like to welcome Mr. Masling and his colleagues here today and to thank you for all of the information um, which you sent to us in advance, uh, which is really helpful at the outset. I just want to say that um, I think it is vital for consumers and the wider economy uh, that the future of permanent TSB uh, is secured. Uh, we certainly do not want to concentrate any further power uh, in the hands of the pillar banks. I don't believe that will be in, in the interest of the economy. Uh, we need a viable and competitive permanent TSP uh, as a counterweight uh, to the power of the pillar banks. Uh, and that said, Mr. Masling, my, my first question is, when do you expect that the bank will become profitable again? Uh, Deputy, good afternoon. Uh, thank, thank you for your kind words and your supportive words. Uh, they all mean a lot to my staff. Um, in terms of uh, the turnaround uh, journey that we are on, um, I would expect uh, the bank to be profitable at the back end of 2016, um, okay. potentially earlier if, uh, if the economy uh, obviously keeps growing at, at the rate it is. Okay, so just moving to the um, recent um, stress tests and the capital requirement that you now have, yes, um, you have said that 80% of the 855 million euro shortfall under the adverse scenario um, has now been provided for. So c can you confirm the amount of the shortfall? It's in the region of 150 to 200 million. Is that the case? Uh, yes, Deputy. Perhaps I'll give you the full transparent detail and then, then, then I've answered your question. So okay. uh, we, we started with 855 million gross. Yeah. Uh, we have a contingent convertible vehicle in our balance sheet worth 400 million. Yeah. So that takes us down to 455. Uh, of that uh, 455, uh, we think circa 80% of that has been covered. So directionally, we'd expect that the net shortfall will be between uh, 100 and 150 million euros, depending on the, the final uh, negotiations with the European Central Bank. Okay. The, the 400 million um, contingent convertible um, in capital note, yeah. when would that have fallen due for repayment at the stage? Uh, it's, uh, it's due to be repaid in July 2016. Okay. So uh, you are now counting that um, towards in, in, in the, the overall... In an accounting sense, we're, we're counting it. Yes, that's correct. Okay, um, so you're looking for 100 to 150 million. Yes. Uh, you're touring the markets. Uh, you have met potential investors, and you said you have said there is interest in the bank story. Um, um, I suppose the question is, how much of the bank is potentially up for grabs? What percentage stake in the bank are you looking to potentially uh, dispose of in order to to raise the 100 to 150 million? Are you looking to raise more than the minimum required? Uh, perhaps if I explain what I think the steps are going to be, that will just help answer the question. Um, we were in uh, London, New York and Boston uh, on what you would call a pre-deal roadshow. Um, essentially, the market is uh, very aware of AIB and BOI. And they, they have a lot more capital market interaction than we do. Um, really, our last capital market interaction was under the guise of Irish life and permanent. And so the first stage was really about telling our story. It was about introductions. Um, I can confirm to uh, the deputy that deal structures, uh, pricing, um, shareholdings were not discussed at those meetings. Okay. Um, what I'm trying to gauge is the level of interest from the uh, capital market community. Um, and therefore, I wouldn't expect to make a public comment about the shape of the deal, probably until the end of uh, quarter one, 2015. Okay. You have until when to finalise it? Uh, nine months from October the 26th, so uh, uh, July, end of July 2015. Okay. Well, clearly potential investors will try to get the maximum stake in the bank for as little money as possible. That's the nature of what they do. And I will just put my own concern on the record, and I don't expect you to respond, but uh, I wouldn't like to see the state's shareholding and permanent TSB um, significantly diluted as a result of the investment that you're now seeking. Um, the state, as you have stated, has put in 2.7 billion euro in net terms. And so the final shape of the capital 
capital plan for the bank must, in my view, um, protect the integrity of the state's investment in permanent ESB. That's a matter between yourself and the shareholder, um, but I would just put that on the record as, as an opinion. Um, if I can move on to the issue of interest rates, Mr Masling, and the standard variable interest rates that, that you're charging, um, which, despite the reduction of when was it a couple of years ago at this stage maybe and um, you're still at the at the high end for an LTV of between 80 and 90 percent uh, a new mortgage uh, has a gross rate of 4.59 percent uh, you have 79,000 standard variable customers in different LTV brackets presumably I suppose I'm asking you for your reaction to the decision of AIB to reduce their rate uh, their comparable rate for example for an LTV of over 80% is now 4.25, which is significantly less than your rate. Um, are you reviewing your rates in light of that? Uh, where does the bank currently stand? Uh, thank you, Deputy. Uh, I, it would be inappropriate for me to comment on the uh, pricing decisions of competitors. Uh, we keep our rates under a uh, consistent review. Um, I would not wish to insult you with a, a, bland, a bland answer, so let me just build on that. Um, just some facts for you. Um, our blended cost of funds is uh, 178 basis points. Um, for example, if you looked at Bank of Ireland, which uh, I looked at last week from the transcript, uh, it's 115 basis yep. points. So, uh, by definition, we need to work to a uh, a lower cost of funds, but that will take us time. Um, you will no doubt understand that uh, we still uh, have to work through the legacy issues. Um, at one stage, uh, we had a loan to deposit ratio in the past of 241%. So you'll understand that it's just going to take us time uh, to, to bring the cost of funds down. So cost of funds is the first thing I would say. Um, of course, the cost of funds doesn't include uh, the cost of running the bank, uh, the cost of risk, um, or the cost of capital, um, all of which uh, we, we have to cover to, to make the bank viable and profitable. Um, the last thing I would say on a, on a blended rate across the whole group, uh, our NIM is 88 basis points. So we still have a significant uh, mountain to climb. So I, I'm absolutely conscious that uh, we must be competitive. Um, uh, I hope that this has been that has been a hallmark of this team, and as you uh, rightly said, was reflected in our early decision to reduce our variable rates unilaterally when I first started, when we were a, a significant outlier. Right. Um, what I can say is that we'll continue to monitor rates closely, and do all we can to reduce our cost of funds, increase our net interest margin, run an efficient business. Um, and then ultimately, if I'm able to do that, we'll, we'll be able to reduce our variable rates where possible. But today, I can't give you any guarantee of when that will happen. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, Mr. Masding, um, and I accept your bank is in a different position to some of the other banks in that you're still losing money and you have to become profitable, uh, but you also have to compete. And that is the, the nature of the market and uh, a young person or a young couple looking to buy a home today and take out a mortgage is going to look for the best rate they can. So if you want to increase your share of, of the mortgage market um, for new entrants, then I think you are going to have to, to move. And yeah, I, 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 respect, uh, I respect your perspective uh, on price. Uh, and as I say, uh, we will keep our rates uh, absolutely under constant review. Um, what I would say would be that uh, I, I hope that price isn't the only factor in determining who one backs with. Um, I hope that we provide uh, a level of banking professionalism and service, which uh, is also attractive to customers. So uh, uh, please don't uh, take my comments that I am dis disagreeing with you. I, I agree with you. We need to okay. keep our rates possible. But I would say that uh, I hope permanent TSP is, is more than just price. Okay. The last question I want to raise in my limited time is about the mortgage arrears situation. And the last time that you were before the committee here in April, I think it was Mr O'Sullivan said, the bank expects to repossess between 2,000 and 4,000 homes, mainly by to lets, but some family homes as well. Now, looking at the numbers on page five and page eight of the presentation you gave to us, you've uh, over 6,200 um, 
principal private residences where the loss of the home is now a very real prospect. Uh, assisted voluntary sale, voluntary surrender, uh, legal action underway, and you have 1,800 uh, buy-to-let properties in the same category. So that's coming up to over 8,000 homes, um, three quarters of which are, are family homes as such, which are now in, in a very serious situation where there is either agreement for the home to be uh, surrendered or where it is essentially before the court. That seems to be a very significant jump from where you expect it to be uh, just a number of months ago when you were before the committee. Uh, le let me give you some perspective and then uh, I'll hand over to Shane and, and he, he can uh, uh, build it with some, some operational expertise. Um, as I ha have detailed to the committee uh, in the past, uh, we have had to build our arrears management function from scratch because the competence in the organisation was uh, uh, at best suboptimal. Um, I believe that we now have a best-in-class retail arrears management function. Uh, we have over or nearly 300 people working with best-in-class technology. Um, I think uh, a really uh, innovative set of potential treatments. And what I can assure uh, our deputy and your colleagues that every customer who engages with us goes through a detailed review of income and expenditure. Uh, our, our starting point position is to try and keep people in a home. Uh, we have two phrases we use, sustainability and affordability, and they are drilled into our staff. Um, sadly, there are times where, uh, unfortunately, uh, we can't find a solution. And uh, uh, we will continue to do everything we can uh, to work uh, with uh, our customers um, to, to find the right solution. But as I say, sadly, that isn't always the case. I like your uh, current account initiative. I know it's been very successful. You've attracted over about 80,000 customers, is that right? About 80,000 accounts have switched. <laughs> um, the one question I would ask is, what commitment are you making to uh, new customers in terms of the, the period of time that you will honour that deal? Um, like I know you've put money behind the initiative, you're advertising, people can save typically between one and 200 euro a year. Uh, if they transfer over um, their main account that their salary is paid into if they're working. Um, but what period can you commit that there will be no fees for those people? Uh, obviously, we keep all, all, uh, all products under constant review, but for the foreseeable future, I, we have no intention at all of, of changing the terms and conditions. Okay. And I assume the, uh, the logic for the bank is you're winning over new customers. You're not making money out of them in terms of their current account but you are hoping to get other business, yeah, which I, is I, personal loans. I, I, I suppose I start from the premise, which I said in my opening remarks, is that um, certainly the, the, the Irish general public that I speak to don't want to get caught up in the pre-2008 financial services complexity, which was thrown at them. So if they wish to avoid complexity, permanent TSP is really simple. You, it, we have a current account, we have savings accounts, we lend money to people who can pay it back. That's the model. Okay. Um, in terms of the um, mortgages, um, somebody who starts off with a high LTV, if over time they're paying down their mortgage or the value of their house increases and they can move down to a lower LTV band, are they locked in in terms of the interest rate at the band which their mortgage was drawn down at or can they submit a revaluation uh, and reduce the interest rate? At this point in time, it's the, the value at the point of origination, the time okay. that the mortgage is opened, and, and that's the rate that holds for that period. You're locked in at that? At this point in time, that's right. Okay, okay, that's fine. Um, just in terms of the, the track reportability product, which yes. you answered a while ago, Mr Mitchell, um, just 97 done, I know it's a relatively new product. It is the most attractive one that I'm aware of in the market. I think you should put some money behind it in terms of marketing. Um, you have 57,000 tracker customers. A lot of them are living in unsuitable homes. They have young families now and they might be living in apartments. And uh, you're willing to offer it to people in, in negative equity in certain circumstances. Um, I would just encourage you to put some money behind it in terms of marketing because um, it's about the best product out there as far as I can see. Yes, and, and thank you for your comments in that regard. Um, we did put a, a lot of weight behind it in uh, March and April of this year, and we plan to do so again next year. Um, I was at the, um, the opening of a revamped PTSB branch in Douglas and Cork recently, and they were telling me that they're hoping to 
um, start um, a new initiative in terms of SME lending? Um, when is that going to get underway and what's your, what's your focus in that area? Uh, we should just clarify where we will participate. So uh, yeah. we have a phrase called OME, which is a subset of SME. OME meaning owner managed enterprises. So okay. we'll be at the, we'll be at the uh, more of the micro end of the market, and we expect to launch that proposition early in 2015. We think it's a, nat a natural extension of our of our business. Okay, and it will be to provide working capital. Yeah, I, I, I mean uh, business current account, business savings account. Uh, business electronic banking, uh, working capital, some degree of term finance. Uh, I, I think we need to be clear where the boundary stops, though, if, if it moves to import, yeah. uh, export finance, factoring, leasing. Uh, you know, I'm very clear as a CEO that ours is a focused business model. There will be times where we'll have to say to customers, we don't do that. OK, and have you an envelope of money in mind? I beg your pardon? And have you an envelope of money in mind, uh, a potential fund? Yeah, we, of X amount. We have more than enough capital to cope with what we think is that size of market. Okay, you're not you're not limiting it. Nope. You're not putting a, nope. a line under it. Okay, um, just in terms of uh, writing off of mortgage debt, has that happened? Is that a solution for customers who remain in their home, or is it only considered where the home is lost and there's a, a residue of debt still owing? So uh, I, th I think. Uh, uh, I've said this at uh, every Eurotus thus far, um, uh, I will not count on as debt forgiveness, which is the, uh, uh, the, 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 the use of taxpayers' money uh, up front. Uh, what I will count on as is what I think is good banking practice, which is, which is debt write-off. Uh, they're two very different things. So if I hand over to Shane, he can explain to you how, what our debt write-off policy is. So um, we, we believe there is credibility and debt write-off at the end of a process. So, so a couple of things I would say about that. Um, I would say if you look to our accounts this year, for the first half of this year, uh, we charged off at a group level 121 million euro. Um, and for 2013, the equivalent charge-off figure at the group level was 175 million euro. Um, this write-off at the end of a process is, is increasing from a low base. Um, day to day, I mentioned earlier that um, we discussed with this committee when we were here in April the concept of providing comfort to people up front about the shortfall after the sale of a property, um, and we're increasingly rolling that out. We're speaking to 500 customers at the moment, and we're giving them a commitment up front that if they work collaboratively with us to sell the property, that we will write off up to 80% of the shortfall okay. once they provide 20% or more of the shortfall. And I would also say, if you look to personal insolvency, um, again, the numbers there are small, but we believe that they will grow. Um, but again, we are open to debt write-off in the insolvency space because we believe it's, it's, it's a, a, a systematic and controlled process. Um, and to date in that process, we've written off or committed to writing off 1.5 million. Okay. So and have you agreed to any write-off where the customer remains in the home? where you have a, a current mortgage holder and at the end of the process that there has been an amount written off, or is it only where the home is, is forfeited? It's, it's the latter, where the, where the home has been forfeited um, and where the, the customer is working as hard as they can and the, the, there's no much harder you can work than, than to, to work with us to sell your property. It's in those situations. Thank you.